Hi everybody, this is Carissa. You can find me on YouTube as Inky Fairy Designs and today I am on Sean Petit's blog and YouTube channel to create this lovely page in my art journal with you. So I'm working in my Dina Wakely mixed media journal and I'm pulling out some vintage papers that I have quite honestly been hoarding and I am finally making myself use them. Um, so I am just going to tear these up a little bit to give them um, some more organic texture for my background. I haven't added gesso or anything to my page because I'm going to be using some gel medium to put these down and that will create the barrier that will help my other mediums move smoothly. When I am doing any type of collage, I like to put a layer of that medium on my journal page or whatever surface I'm creating. And then I also put a thin layer on the paper that I am going to collage down. I find that this gives a really nice, good stick and my papers are less likely to curl up. I also add a thin layer on top and um, then I'm ready to go ahead and put that second piece down on the bottom. I'm going to use the same technique. Um, this is just how I've always collaged and it's how I definitely prefer to do it. I've also realized that I am out of gel medium, <laughs> so I definitely need to get some more. Okay. So I'm going to add some texture using the Liquitex Heavy Gesso, and I love this technique for stenciling and adding texture. I pulled out two of the new stencils from the spring collection at Sean Petit's website. I'm using pattern three as well as pattern two. I love the patterns in these stencils. They remind me of like vintage wallpaper in a way, um, or maybe like really fancy tiles or something like that. I just love them. Instead of using a texture paste, I did use a heavy body gesso, and the reason that I did that is simply because I am able to get a smoother application and it dries quicker because um, it doesn't build up as much as when I am using a texture paste. So that's why I went with that today. Uh, whenever I am working in my art journal or just doing general art play, I really like to um, speed along the process if I can and so this is one way I'm able to kind of minimize uh, waiting for certain layers to dry before moving on to the next layer and I do use my heat tool in between um, I am not a purist in the sense <laughs> that I have to let layers naturally dry uh, whether I am working in my art journal or working with watercolors or anything if I can use my heat tool it is definitely one of my uh, art staples in my studio so I'm just kind of going in I am uh, making those edges not so uh, blocked off or you know so you can't see that stencil square anymore I'm just roughing those up with my palette knife and um, kind of uh, along the edges where my collage was, adding a little bit of that heavy gesso along the edge and just smoothing it all, um, kind of making it all cohesive. So I'm placing this butterfly. It is part of a collage download that you can get on seanpetit.com and I've cut it out and I, you can see me kind of placing it on my page and kind of getting an idea of where I want to eventually put that. Before I do put that down though, I wanted to add some color to my page. I'm really enjoying the Dina Wakely Media Gloss Sprays. I've been using them a lot. They make creating backgrounds very quick and easy. You can see I do have a cardboard box behind it because uh, it does have quite an overspray and I just wanna protect um, my area behind where I am because I have a small space right now and there's a lot of things there and um, some things I just don't want to color with these beautiful sprays. So I do have that there and I'm going back and forth. I added in another color. Um, so the colors that I'm using are turquoise, olive, and night to create the background. And you can see I did a little bit of lifting with a baby wipe through the stencil just to add a little bit more texture. 
And now I am tipping my page up and spraying it with water. While the sprays are wet, they will move like watercolors. However, unlike most other ink sprays that you might be used to, they are permanent when dry, which is why they have become an absolute must have in my art studio. And I love them. So while it's wet, um, you can see there was a number 13 on that collage paper. And I noticed that when I was ripping it apart and I intentionally chose that side to leave up because my birthday is on the 13th and um, it was on the 13th of February. And uh, it's my favorite number, probably because it's my birthday, but um, I just, anytime I see that on a piece of paper or something, I like to kind of highlight that in my art, art journal. Okay, so I added a few white splatters, uh, again with the Dina Weekly Gloss Media spray and now I'm ready to add my butterfly that layer is dry and you can see as I'm going over with the collage medium or the gel medium that that does not move and that is what I absolutely love about these sprays quick and easy backgrounds you know I like fast you know I like simple so I'm uh, adhering my butterfly just like I did my first layer of collage added some of that to my background, added a little layer on the back of the butterfly, and now I'm sealing it down with another layer on top. Once that is completely dry, I'm going to try and do some journaling underneath the butterfly. Um, this pen really didn't want to write on top of that uh, gel medium or the gloss sprays, um, but I think I just went into it a little too soon. Had I let it dry, a little bit better I think it would have worked just fine but I'm gonna power through and get that journaling on there now I'm gonna go around the edges of the butterfly collage and I want to try to make it pop off the background I started with my Stabilo Marksall in black which is definitely my go-to in this type of technique where I want to highlight a certain area of my journal or if I do any collage, um, it is just what I like to use. So I'm grabbing a water brush and I'm gonna go ahead and activate that pencil that I shaded around the butterfly. And um, it didn't really do what I wanted it to do. Uh, it kind of, um, it kind of highlighted the butterfly a little bit, but not as much as I wanted it to. And I think it's just because the colors that I used around it on the background ended up being a little bit darker than I anticipated. So I'm gonna step back, I'm gonna try to add a little bit more color to it. I pulled out some uh, of the scribble sticks from Dina Wakely Media and I'm trying to add a little bit more color to the butterfly, keeping in the same uh, color family that it already is. The aloe was actually a perfect match to the green on this butterfly, um, but then I wanted to brighten that up again, so I think I brought in lime and a little bit of turquoise, and that gave it a little bit more dimension than just leaving it flat on the page. You can see to pick up more color from the scribble sticks, I am pulling it right off of the stick itself using my water brush, and this would go for any type of water soluble medium that is like a scribble stick, whether it is like an oil stick or anything like that. You could do the same type of thing using that. So now I'm going around the butterfly again, trying to figure out how I'm going to make this pop off my page. So I decided to bring in my Posca white paint marker and you can see I'm going over the journaling that I did in black because again it just was fading into the background and while it's not legible or anything like that I really wanted that to stand out so I'm going over that with the Posca white pen or white paint marker and I'm going to go around the entire butterfly using that same marker and I'm just doing it very loose and kind of scribbly so I don't want it to be perfect because it will not be perfect I have a lot of texture behind it and so if I intentionally go in there trying to make it scribbly and add a little scribble lines um, then I don't feel like I have to be so perfect with it so I'm outlining even the body of the butterfly and then just making sure and this really is what gave my focal image the pop that I wanted 
to have from the background. It just kind of separates it a little bit and I'm able to see it more. So I love to add a little bit of black splatters. I've been really enjoying using this ink spray for that. Uh, um, and uh, I, in hindsight, you'll see later when I try to add my collage to the paper or the art journal page, I really need to remember when I'm using an ink spray in my art journals that it has to be the absolute last thing that I do. If it's not the last thing that I do, it will smear and could ruin whatever layers I want to put on top. Case in point, the you know the um, words that I wanted to add to my page. These words come from Sean Petit's subscriber library. So if you're a subscriber to her newsletter, you get a passcode, um, and you get access to all of these awesome collage papers that you can just download and use. And this is where I got these words. There's tons of inspirational. Um, sayings and quotes and just words on this and I love to cut it up and use it in my art journal. Um, so I'm collaging that down on the butterfly. Uh, it says she decided to stop letting fear hold her back which is something that is so important to me right now uh, and I have talked about it in other videos um, but I'm really trying to put myself out there and do more things for myself and for my family. So you can see here when I'm going over this with my collage medium, you can see that ink, that black ink start to move. And that's what I'm talking about. Uh, when you're working with an ink spray like that, just try to make it the absolute last layer and you won't fuss like I have with trying to get my little collage words on here without totally wiping them or covering them up with that black. But in the end, it's okay. Kind of get it kind of grunged them up a little bit and I'm okay with it. For the final touch, I uh, just uh, wanted to add some glitter and I picked up these Deco Art Galaxy glitters and they're uh, heavy loaded glitter acrylic paint and they're amazing. So I am using the color, I think it's turquoise or aqua meteor and it was perfect for the turquoise spray that I had on my page just to give it a little bit of shine and shimmer. And that's about it. That finishes my art journal page aside from just doing a little bit of uh, fraying of the words on the body of the butterfly just to make them pop a little bit. Um, I like to do that whenever I do a, a, a little bit of collage on top of another layer. Um, either with the white or the black really just makes it stand out. So I hope you enjoyed this video and how I used these new spring stencils along with some uh, collage packs available at Sean Petit to create this art journal page. And um, I just hope you were inspired by it. And I'd love to see what you create. If you are inspired by any of the artwork you see here, on YouTube or my Instagram channel or anybody on the Sean Petit creative team, please feel free to tag us at Sean Petit or myself at Inky Fairy Designs as I'm sure I would love to come by and leave you some love and see what you guys are creating because as much as I get the messages and emails that you ins that you are inspired by things that I create, I am so inspired by the things that you create as well and I love seeing your interpretation of my artwork. So if you enjoyed this video definitely give us a thumbs up and subscribe to both Sean Petit's channel and mine at Inky Fairy Designs so that you can get each new video when it comes out. Click the bell if you want to be informed as soon as a new one is uploaded and I will see you in the next one. Bye.